At 3.30 in the morning in the middle of the desert in western Utah, Walter Bornard had a diabetic emergency as he was a passenger on a Greyhound bus. The Greyhound bus driver believed he was under the influence of alcohol and put him off the bus in the middle of the Utah desert. This animation was designed to show Walter's plight as he staggered around at 3.30 in the morning along the side of I-15. 3.30 in the morning on August 4th of 2014, the Greyhound driver dropped Walter off on Veterans Memorial Highway, about 11 miles from the nearest town and about nine miles from the last gas station, which had closed at 11 p.m. that evening. Walter stood around on the south side of I-15 for a few minutes and tried to orient himself. We know where he was dropped. Uh, we know that, again, it was 10.3 miles to the town of Leeds and about nine miles, 8.8 .8 miles from the gas station that had closed earlier that evening. We know this stretch of I-15 was completely unlit, and we also know the speed limit out there uh, was 80 miles per hour. These are the local wildlife that can kill you that live in that area where Worcester Bornard was dropped off by the Greyhound driver. And we know generally what happened after Mr. Bornard was dropped off there on the south side of I-15. Walter wandered around for a short time and tried to orient himself as to what was going on out there. He started walking for a short time up the side of the road. And then we know Walter made his first bad decision. He tried to walk across the southbound lanes of I-15 and was nearly struck by a motorist who then called 911 and told the Utah Highway Patrol that a man was walking around in the middle of the traffic lanes on I-15. Unfortunately, they couldn't get out there quick enough. Walter then made his next bad decision. Walter decided to walk through that median between the southbound and northbound lanes of I-15 where all those things lived that could kill an unsuspecting person who was there at that time of the night. Miraculously, Walter made it over to the northbound lanes of I-15, right about the same time that Robert Thompson was driving 80 miles per hour or close to it uh, down the highway. Walter was wearing dark clothes, and the only thing that he had on which would reflect light was his Panama hat. Uh, he then decided to walk across and made his last bed decision to walk across the northbound lanes. Uh, there was an overcrossing just before where Walter was, and Mr. Thompson went under that undercrossing and finally saw Walter, tried to avoid hitting him, but the cage trailer on the back of his truck jackknifed and sent Walter flying northbound along the road for about 23 feet. This is the lone picture we had from the Utah Highway Patrol that showed Walter just after the incident occurred. Walter broke his pelvis in five places, fractured his right humerus, and suffered a bad head injury. But the thing that nearly killed him at the Dixie Regional Medical Center emergency room was the fact that his blood sugar had gone up over 500 because he couldn't get his diabetes medication. During our investigation of this case, we obtained copies of the Greyhound driver manuals and realized that Greyhound's own rules required the drivers to notify the local law enforcement if they put a passenger off the bus anywhere but a place where there was light and civilization. The driver admitted that he failed to do that in this case, and we actually found out that he had been previously reprimanded for doing something very similar several years earlier. Our federal judge ordered this case to mediation and Greyhound delayed it several times, but it finally occurred more than two years after the incident. Walter's condition had worsened and he was on death's door when we went to mediation with his daughter on his behalf and were successful in getting Greyhound to pay a million dollars to settle Walter's claim.